Welcome everyone and I'm very glad you could join us today. My name is Laura Jones and I'm the Northwest Regional Coordinator of the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Office. I will be the host and question moderator for today's webinar, Starting and Growing a Library of Things, presented by Diane Connery, Director of the Pottsboro Public Library in Pottsboro, Texas. After the webinar has been transcribed, it will be available on the Indiana State Library's archived webinars page. If you're watching an archived recording of this presentation, information on how to obtain your LEU is in the video's description in YouTube. For weekly updates on upcoming trainings and to learn more about what's happening in libraries across the state, please subscribe to the Indiana State Library's e-newsletter, The Wednesday Word, and check out our continuing education website for other professional development opportunities. So let's get started. I'm now happy to turn over the presentation to Diane Connery. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here. She mentioned I'm the director of the Pottsboro Library, and I usually add that I'm the accidental director of the Pottsboro Library. I'm not quite sure how I ended up here. I had lived in large cities my whole life, San Francisco, Atlanta, Dallas, and about 10 years ago, um, I wanted a view other than just a fence in my backyard. So I moved to this rural community. We're about an hour and a half north of Dallas. And there's a big lake here, Lake Texoma. So I'd never lived in a rural town before. Um, and initially, I did not have plans to work or volunteer or meet anybody. <laughs> I just wanted to do my own thing um, and it didn't take long before somebody said well I'll come to one of the the board meetings for the library and the next month the uh, board president moved to Chicago and I became the board president and then shortly after that I feel like there was a coup and I <laughs> became the library director um, never having library experience in my background but I had been a corporate trainer and also an entrepreneur. And so in our rural community, um, it's very small town with not many businesses in town, small tax base. So the city doesn't have much to um, offer us in terms of funding. And in fact, 10 years ago, there was zero funding. It was all volunteer, all donations. And um, just strategically, which is a lot of what I'm going to touch on today, even though I'm talking about Library of Things, this was a strategic move on our part because what we thought 10 years ago as volunteers were aging out and our budget was, the bank balance was just, you know, going down because it was funded by things like donations and bake sales we thought, well, this library is going to have to close its doors. And in fact, every board meeting was a discussion of, okay, how many months do we have left before we have to close? So a group of us said, well, what if we just did everything differently? And there was an old Seinfeld episode where George Costanza flipped the script and started telling people he was living with his parents and he didn't have a job and all of a sudden he started getting dates and that's kind of what we did. We said what if we became so important to this community that then if we closed our doors people would just be up in arms so upset about it. So um, I was fortunate to take through our state library I took a training called Harwood Institute and it's about turning outwards and looking at what your community wants rather than, and I'm so guilty of this, I see all these neat ideas on different library groups like, oh, I'd love to, to offer this. So, um, it, it, and then sometimes I would offer spectacular things. I thought people would knock down the doors and nobody would come. So Library of Things really was about turning outwards, looking outside our building and saying, what do people here need? And just kind of spoiler alert, um, 10 years later, we are now a city department. Um, last year, our, the city gave us $40,000, which doesn't sound like a lot to big city libraries, but for us, that's that's huge because it really did come down to 
um, at budget meetings, the police wanted to replace a 10-year-old police car last year, and um, the, the city council said, we're going to have you wait one more year so we can I increase, yet again, <laughs> the, the library's budget. So um, ten, 10 years in a row, or I guess it's eight years in a row, the, the city has increased our budget. So I think that shows we did what, what we wanted to accomplish. So, um, Library of Things, let's just talk, I, a lot of you are interested, so maybe you've already bought into the idea, um, but I want to cover in this why we do it, choosing the things we do, um, cataloging and processing, how we circulate things, um, marketing and public relations. And um, and also in the chat, I was just going to ask everybody if you're already uh, circulating non-traditional items of some kind, um, please put into the chat what you're doing because it may give me some some good ideas as well. And I will also say, looks like there are so, a lot of rural libraries. I don't know if there are any larger ones um, attending now. But this is so scalable, no matter what your budget is, no matter what the size of, of your building is. Because we're basically one big room here. They say it's 3,000 square feet, but I don't think so. I think, well, yeah, that includes some staff storage and stuff. So we don't have a lot of, a lot of space here. But I think we are in, um, and, and before COVID, I would have said this, and even more so now, I think we are in such a, a, an incredible time of opportunity for libraries. We're in this uh, moment of transition, and we're transitioning from this traditional role to the emerging role as this platform for community progress. Um, and I, at library innovation, we've seen it here, not only will transform individuals, uh, but also the whole community. We now, as a library, have really become the community um, leader, and people come to us now to um, participate, like the city, to participate in strategic plans. As an aside, we also uh, manage city IT now. Um, so. We're a transformative institution in Pottsboro, and it needed it because it wasn't, unlike some small towns um, that are quaint and have old little town squares, Pottsboro really wasn't like that. It was like driving back in time, but not in a cute way. So uh, for the survival of the library in my community, um, we had to do things that mattered and be pragmatic. So many of our decisions are, and we're in, in budget time right now, us thinking about, okay, when I'm standing in front of city council presenting my, you know, what I, I want for the coming year, it needs to be things that um, persuade city council. And in my town, don't tell them I said this, but um, that's not the traditional things that's, um, story story times or things that is not what they're looking for because they consider those more quality of life and meanwhile their infrastructure in the town water lines have to be replaced a new fire truck that kind of thing so i have to hit them with something that really um is, sparks their interest and at the same time, though, as we're talking about this, this is what libraries have done for a long time. It's all about the sharing economy. Um, our library is located in a lower income section of town. Um, a surprising number of citizens don't have cars. And I would say there's no public transportation. I guess, to be fair, I would say there's almost no. There is one system that if you make a reservation and if they have funding, um, they will take you to a medical appointment or something. But, and there's also, there's no ride sharing in our community. So there, you know, Uber hasn't made it to, 
to Pottsboro yet. So, um, and there, the housing authority, housing and subsidized apartments are nearby. So there are a lot of people very close to the library who have significant needs. So w uh, when we were assessing community needs, we looked at what would benefit those people. And uh, we talked to residents of public housing and um, one family in particular who was in here almost every day, um, it was a mother who had two sons, five and seven, and told me that they had to do all of their grocery shopping at the dollar store um, because the dollar store was within walking distance, but the grocery store was not. And so what that meant is absolutely no fresh fruits, vegetables, produce for the kids. There are convenience foods at the dollar store. And um, I, I learned that for her after school snack for her kids, um, it was a bag of marshmallows and the kids would just um, split the bag of marshmallows. So, and that broke my heart because how is that going to fuel them for learning? So one of the first things we talked about was um, bicycles and cargo bicycles so that they could get to the grocery store and bring things back. Um, and we knew we could help them. Uh, there was a, a man near here who actually didn't have w running water in his home, um, <clears throat> but ended up receiving all kinds of fines from the city because he didn't cut his grass. So we got one of those rotary mowers. Um, we thought, well, we can help those situations. So some of the things are fun and some are really practical. Um, and so um, <clears throat> we're fortunate to have, uh, and I know not everybody has this, but there's a family in town who is very philanthropic and they came to me unsolicited with a $10,000 check and said, um, do something that impacts this community, we trust you. And so that's when we decided to do the Library of Things. At the same time, we received a grant from the Texas State Library and that funded bicycles and sports equipment, some outdoor things. Um, and it's just a collection of non-traditional items available to check out. And we already were circulating some more high-tech things. We had, um, through a grant from Best Buy, we had gotten GoPro cameras and DSLR um, cameras that we were circulating. And um, then we had some hot spots we were uh, circulating iPads, projectors. So I started, I used to call myself the queen of Google. I, I spent time on the internet looking at what other libraries and organizations were doing. And um, there were a couple in the US, and I, I'm sure there are more now, but one I looked at was um, Sacramento had a library of things. And I've learned since, um, outside of Boise, Idaho, I think it's Eagle Public Library, has one that really pertains to their community. I think it's very neat. And in England um, and other places, there are these nonprofits not related to libraries. The one in England um, I'm familiar with is called the Library of Things. And we use that for inspiration. One of their, they put out in neighborhoods, um, what are those, like the tr tractor trailer, the trailer, and that becomes their um, storage place for those. So as we're talking about this, you think have to think about what you have space for um, in your place. So um, around the U.S. there are a number of specialized collections not affiliated with libraries that offer tools. They're specifically tool libraries and then some makerspace kind of things that sort of that's affiliated as well because 
some of those you go to a space but they are lending the tools to use in that space and um, as as is often said bringing people to the library exposes them to what we offer and for example we have a, a makerspace stem area that has virtual reality 3d printer green screen that kind of thing um, and then also forward thinking we're positioning ourselves for future grants related to sustainability because we live on a lake especially and I think nationwide um, drinking water water's becoming more of a um, focus on what people are thinking about water conservation um, we're thinking about those things and so everything kind of builds on each other our library of things has brought in new groups to the library that we can then build on we we leverage for you know okay and I don't know if this term is universal or not but here they call themselves crunchy moms and I had never heard that term before but it, it's a lot of um, parents in our area many of them homeschool um, many of them want more natural things um, outdoor play we started a community garden um, it has a hundred beds so some of the things in our library of things are gardening related um, canning supplies I'll get into some more specifics later um, but these things also to to consider can be used to build programming around it we did um, an earthen building program related to the community garden so it really is something that can grow in all kinds of um, directions but you think about the the library as um, the library of things as shared shared wealth community wealth I guess I should say So actually we have more than this but um, <laughs> here's some of the things that that we got an egg incubator um, kind of an interesting one then a lot related sort of related to our community garden like we got the the canner so that the thing and dehydrator things people were growing they could then preserve we let's see the iron and ironing board is still in its wrapper that has never <laughs> been checked out yet some of the things i thought would be popular haven't been we have a bunch of different cake pans you know some of those well even bunt and that kind of thing um but specialized cake pans and a lot of things we have now originally we used that ten thousand dollars to to buy um, new and nice and expensive things but since then we have um, obtained a lot of our things through donations especially our areas a it's a big retirement community so people who are downsizing you know kids come here to empty out parents houses and they have all these tools and things that they would love to give to a good home they just don't know where to to put them so um, we we will happily take the things that will be used here and then again speaking strategically um, you'll see on the right hand column the horseshoes tetherball shuffleboard set our town built a, um, a park through a grant <laughs> um, and it has a tetherball post and it has a shuffleboard um, area whatever you call it and horseshoe a horseshoe pit but they didn't have the supplies and I've heard at City Council meetings a uh, continuous talk about sometime in the future you know we're gonna get a parks department and we'll hire a parks person so I was trying to set the stage that the library can take that funding that they would give to a separate person and then we can sort of be the parks department as well we posted on Facebook asking people for um, 
community input about what they would like us to have and I got a lot of ideas I would have never even thought about. Um, the staff thought about what we would like. We interviewed um, patrons who came in and um, people said things uh, that I wouldn't have considered like um, traffic cones to uh, when kids are getting their driver's license they're learning how to parallel park which I thought was extremely um, clever so the sky's the limit on on this kind of thing also um, because it's an older community I got a lot of the children's things like high chairs pack and play so that um, when grandparents have their kids come and they hate to just buy a high chair for you know once a year visit they can check it out here so that makes that population um, happy cash box good for a garage sale let's see So um, storage, what do you have room for? I'll show you later. We actually, through a grant, were able to get a metal storage building. But um, there are libraries that have a cookie cutter library of things. So it could be basically one or two shelves in your, your library. But you just have to think about what you have room for and how you will access it with your staff. Um, and again, it can be scaled to your space. I will tell you one of the issues we have because we're a small library, occasionally there's just one person working at a time. And so if somebody comes for something from the Library of Things, they have to walk outside, open up the, the shed, you know, give the person who's checking out their um, whatever they're checking out. So. You know, it's often patrons are left inside the library for, I don't know, five minutes with no staff member in here. But actually, it, that has, it feels weird. Sometimes I'll say to one of our regular patrons, like, okay, you're in charge now. But nothing um, ha ha negative has happened because of it. So um, our ILS is called Apollo, and I am finally just now finishing up my MLS, and I had never had uh, any cataloging training when we started this, but here's what we did. Um, in Apollo, we would put things in shelf location, library of things, and then we would have in the call thing. So, if we were searching for something, it's like, well, what is that? You know, you might not know what to think of calling something a lopper. So we needed a way that we could um, put everything in there that it was easily discoverable. Um, we did, we tried a folder with the um, items, but that just got out of hand as we added things to, um, to the system. So, um, one issue we have had, I don't know if other ILS would work this way, but with Apollo, and I love them, they've, they've been very good, but we've talked to them. There's no way to reserve something in advance in the system. So, um, I had somebody come in yesterday. Their daughter's wedding is going to be in November and they want to reserve all the tables and chairs and some of our outdoor games and a canopy, these other things. Um, and there's no way in our system to reserve it for a future date. So what we'll do is we'll go into the notes for that record and then just, you know, put in all caps, reserve for you know, November 9th or whatever it is. And that, that way, if somebody comes in, every time between now and then somebody comes in to check that out, it pops up in the system. And we, again, we try to keep also this um, note at the desk, but I found, I guess when things get crazy, you don't always refer to notes on the desk. So 
it, it needs to be automated as much as possible. Okay, so that is uh, <laughs> the, the first day when I, when I said I put on um, Facebook asking people what they wanted. Um, within 10 minutes of me putting it on Facebook, the news station from the town that's about 30 minutes away <clears throat> had called me and said, hey, we want to come do a story. And like, hey, we're not ready yet. Um, there's almost nothing in there. It would be much better to come <laughs> in the future. But no, I guess in small towns, sometimes they're really anxious for news. So they came out um, right away to do a story on it, which is another piece of our strategic thinking. Uh, we have found city council um, really likes things that get positive uh, coverage for Pottsboro. And so this library of things has gotten a lot of, of positive coverage for Pottsboro. And you can just see in that door, there's a, um, oh, what's it? Oh, a Yeti cooler. It will, so if people are going camping, it will keep ice frozen for seven days. So we have some really nice things because I guess it's, it is important to me that um, people have nice things. I don't want it to be just because, you know, they couldn't afford it personally. I don't want it to be that it's all used, beat up kind of stuff. And so that's something very nice for people um, that they have. And um, I will say, we, I mean, we have, as I said, gotten some used things, but it's all, it's all in, in good shape. And so circulation, we have... Um, a signed waiver, I saw somebody mentioned in um, about liability, and of course your mileage may vary. Um, we're kind of the wild west here, <laughs> and uh, we do have waivers, and I think I borrowed much of ours from Sacramento. So we actually, we have two um, things. We have paperwork that they check out agreeing that they're checking it out, it is in good condition, and they agree to replace, uh, to pay replacement cost if it um, is not returned. And for books and other materials inside, we do not charge overdue fines. We do charge overdue fines for our Library of Things items. And in fact, it's $10 a day. now. Occasionally somebody will say, oh, I was in the hospital or something, we don't charge them. But we have such waiting lists for certain items, it's really a problem if somebody keeps the carpet cleaner or the pressure washer out. Um, and I guess, you know, in terms of power tools, one of the things I really did want to have was um, a power drill because if you read the statistics on that, everybody who has a power drill, it, it's like the average it's used in any one home is a total of, you know, an hour and a half through the life of the, the power drill. But so again, that sharing economy and sustainability, it would make so much more sense for those things you only need once in a while to be able to use them um, and then return them. Because not only do you not want to pay for them, um, you don't want to store them. So it makes so much more sense. So in the end, I did not get a power drill because one of the board members specifically expressed concern about that. I got a, you know one of the manual drills. Um, but your mileage may vary. I am not an attorney. Um, <laughs> so do what, do what your library feels like is best. We do have laminated instructions available. Um, the carpet cleaner I mentioned is, I guess the two top things that are checked out from our library of things, the carpet cleaner and pressure washer. 
Um, and originally I had bought some of the, the soap for the carpet cleaner and like the first people who checked out the soap were lucky enough to not even have to buy that. Um, later people, if they wanted soap, had to buy their own soap for it. And then sometimes they return their leftover to us that then we pass on to the, to the next people. Um, one lesson learned with the carpet cleaner is um, we now, when it is checked out, we tip it back to show them the brusher thing at the bottom, roller bar, whatever, is clean. Um, and when someone checks it in, we check to make sure it is clean because we had one time somebody must have had dogs or some kind of pets at home and it was so uh, full of dog hair that the next person who checked it out didn't realize that we didn't know it they didn't see it till they got home and they were grossed out and brought it back so now we're <laughs> We're very good about checking that. And I would say that is one of the difficult issues is um, making sure that all the parts are returned with things. Um, you know, if you've checked out hot spots, you've probably experienced this too. Sometimes people won't return the uh, charger with it. And so we have pictures of all the pieces that go out with something so when it is checked back in we just double check that picture to make sure all the pieces are are checked in on the, on and with it and that's that's that slide um so and, and the other ways if you're doing if your library of things if you end up doing some kind of um I don't know, like smallish to medium kit or technology thing. I've seen libraries who have that, should know the name of it, but it's that foam that's sort of like that you use in camera cases um, to prevent things getting hurt. They will do cutouts for each piece. So if it's in a case, all you have to do is open that case and if there is a cutout that doesn't have a piece in it, then you know something is missing. So that's an easy way to um, make sure that everything is is returned. And I'm I'm hoping that I can learn from you all too of what you all are doing. So a marketing, um, in a way, it takes care of itself because it does get a lot of media coverage and a lot of word of mouth. But in a way, it is an issue because people don't think to come to the library for it. So we do on our circulation desk, we keep a big poster, um, we send it out in our newsletter, that kind of thing. But we'll still get people coming in all the time who say, oh, I have no idea that that you do that kind of thing. Um, so it is, you know, keep sharing, keep putting it on Facebook, uh, just to get it out there. Um, so uh, we focused on meeting the needs of the community, and I think that has gone a long way towards um, it, it getting a lot of use. But just because some other library, their library of things, you know, some item is popular doesn't mean that it will be in your area. And then one of the things we did to get the word out initially is we had a grand opening. We have an ice cream maker. So for our grand opening, uh, and then we have these cute little parfait dishes that are in it too. We had out as many things as we could from the library of things. Um, to be used in the grand opening, so the ice cream maker, the dishes, the tables, the chairs, um, and then of course we had our um, place open so that people could go in and um, see what was in there, and we had some of the outdoor games set up as well, and that made some good good visuals and media coverage as well.
so a number of different stories have been done uh, and just to go along with the idea of a sharing economy in the upper right there you'll see we had a children's clothing swap and a toy swap so that's not directly related to the library of things but it was it was a great way to get a whole new audience in the library and it, it went along with that theme of sustainability because we know how quickly kids grow out of things so it was a way again to help the community um, get things that they needed and there are all kinds of the one i haven't done yet that i really keep talking about um, is doing some kind of craft sharing event because at one time I thought oh I just needed everything to become a quilter and I did it for about a year and I've never touched it again so and crocheting same thing so I, I think that would be a great swap to kind of those sorts of things so now just to tell you a little more um, what we have Oh yeah, food mill that went with our canning um, supplies. And then building programming around what you have. In a community college um, in a neighboring town, they have a culinary school. And one of their culinary students came and taught a canning class. And it really was inspirational because she loves to can and she brought all kinds of salsas and enchilada sauces and all kinds of things she had done so again then we can tie that back to the community garden you know you grow your things over there and then you don't know what to do with all the jalapenos you got well you know come here we'll teach you how to to use it as well as um <laughs> We know relationships are such a huge part of, of what we do. And as often as possible, I'm really um, building this relationship with the community college because they have so many resources. And, um, and then, you know, we help them out as well. Now with COVID, uh, a lot of students don't have internet at home in our area, which has become a whole nother project for me, but um, we're helping to get internet to those, uh, their students who don't have it. So extension cord, food saver, um, and again, the food saver is an item that had, when we bought it, it came with all kinds of um, the the plastic it needed and so that was like okay first people to check it out didn't even have to buy plastic um, and that was that was a real win-win for for them there's the ice cream maker I mentioned um, cake pan sets we've got cookie cutters we had a, a fabulous um, cookie decorator in our area again talking about relationships she had done a cookie decorating class um, at our library and um, that then helped us promote our cookie cutters then she ended up getting out of that business and giving us hundreds of cookie cutters so um, it was sort of that thing that um, I guess she could have sold them but she just felt like she wanted them to go to a good home where they would get a lot of use so um, she's done that and then if at all possible when people are borrowing these things it's wonderful to um, have them take pictures and tag you in Facebook so that you can use it for more promotion so um, game nights adult games um, just to encourage people I mean a library is about connecting people with information and with one another and this helps people you know host get-togethers in their homes or sometimes we do game nights here used to do game nights here at the library um, and they could check out um, games to use one of the biggest 
items that has been a, a success is outdoor games. Um, people have used them for kids' birthday parties, for neighborhood block parties. Um, we have a cornhole game, ladder toss, and a giant Jenga, a giant connect for, um, and then we have other things that would go with, you know, giving a party, like we've got those little kiddie pools. So people will come and get their whole birthday party set up here uh, because they can get the table and chairs, they can get the ice cream maker. Um, so it makes such a fun way for people to um, think of the library as, as a resource. Um, cash box, so for garage sales or fundraisers, um, people will check out, you know, tables and chairs, cash box, and you don't need a cash box at home all the time, but it's so nice when there is one available, and then that helps us connect with people, because um, well, like the, our volunteer fire department was doing some kind of fundraiser, so they check things out and that just helps build our relationship with them. And again, the label maker is something, actually that was something, there are things that I want for the library that I use at the library, but we don't need it all the time, we can share it too. And so um, we shared that that label maker has been popular. And there's some of our um, outdoor games. And again, just a Facebook post, we um, put it, oh yeah, I forgot, it's yard pong, it's not beer pong. So it, it's buckets where these giant like ping pong balls go into. And I've also taken these things when we've done like a town festival or something going on, I'll set those up as another way of promoting it and another way of saying, you know, the library is a fun place and we're more than you expect. And people have used these for weddings, family reunions, all kinds of things. In fact, this will be the greatest story ever. Can't wait to get, get pictures. A couple met here at the library, got married last weekend. They checked out yard games and a bunch of these things. So they met at the library, checked out these things from the library to do their wedding. Um, and I, they're just a young couple. I, I really love them. So that's gonna be a great um, story to share with the media. Tools, there's those loppers I mentioned. I never knew what they were called. I think that's the official name. <coughs> Cross promotion. Let's see, is that it? Um, when uh, p there's a, a family who sells fresh eggs that have the the most the richest looking yolks I'd ever seen in my life. It's like nothing like store bought. They sell eggs, but they every year, maybe more than once a year, they um, borrow our incubator. We actually have two um, to hatch eggs. And then I ask them to post on their website, the Chicken of the Pines, that it's a library thing. So this cross promotion, um, ends up working well for for both of us and then the school uh, no actually because of covid they ended up not doing it but in the spring they were going to borrow an incubator as a class project um, to use that so let's see wait let me look here oh dang it i did <laughs> I left out one slide I did mean to put in. Um, sewing machines. We got uh, a donation through, uh, it's a nonprofit that will also, uh, I believe, give you sewing machines for free too. They're refurbished, I think occasionally they're new, but they're refurbished sewing machines. And the nonprofit's name is the sewingmachineproject.org. And um, it is a nonprofit that puts sewing machines out in the world 
for for good and so all they ask is that you do some project with them with the sewing machines for good for the community and so we had put on facebook that there was an urgent need to make masks and that we had five sewing machines that could be checked out if anyone would like to make masks to donate and uh, so we did have an operating room nurse who checked one out was making for the surgical team she wanted a specialized kind that you can um, put uh, a, some kind of filter pocket in she did that um, and then we had people make literally hundreds of masks and um, they put it on um, it, w we got donated material as well because people saw the call so we were able to give out material and sewing machines people in the community made hundreds of masks some of them they chose to like there was one person who was um, really concerned about all the restaurant workers and the grocery store and um, so she made masks for them and the sonic and then some people just brought the mask here so we were able to give them out um, to the public as well and that became a huge deal because also with our um, 3D printer, we were giving out ear, uh, we were printing ear guards for mask and we were able to um, give out mask and ear, ear guards. So it, that became a huge deal. And it is the sewing machine project, project.org. Somebody check me, make sure that link link is correct please um best responses i've had so one guy came in and returned a carpet cleaner and said you saved my marriage and i laughed and he said he such a straight face he said no really you saved my marriage turns out they had new carpet and he had spilled something on it and he said his wife was going to leave him until he came here, got the carpet cleaner, and got the spot out of the carpet. So I loved that. Um, and we have a ukulele, which again, you could offer ukulele lessons. You could even do, um, you could do that online. And um, a Boy Scout leader came in and got the ukulele and <laughs> he told me when he brought it back that he wasn't cool until he came to this library and now the boys think he's cool so that was fun so we've checked out that those outdoor games and various things also to uh, vacation bible schools there was a fundraiser for a local um, wildlife refuge so just all kinds of um, things that are you know that you can reach the community and then build relationships. This is uh, my contact information and I'll be happy to answer questions. Um, well, I, and we're gonna open it up now for questions, of course, and, and then if there are things you think of later, feel free to email me. Um, and I will be happy to get back with you. So that's kind of how Library of Things works in Pottsboro. I don't have all the, the answers, but um, it's a work in progress. So questions, what questions do we have? Okay, thank you, Diane, that was wonderful. So some of the questions I um, wrote down, you've already answered, so that was perfect. I do have a few questions that kind of go together. So they're all about cleaning. So Caitlin had asked um, any issues with cleaning the children's items such as strollers, pack and plays. And then Vicki asked, what is the cleaning process for all the items? How long does it take? And that kind of thing. That, yes, that is a consideration. Um, and I guess the first thought when you talk to cleaning, before our library really closed for um, COVID, you know, we were talking about, well, we're a family place library. So we have a children's area with lots of toys and that kind of thing. And we just have always followed family place libraries, cleaning protocols. Um, so it's, you know, soaking things in a bleach solution when you can, or we have disinfecting 
um, solution we spray and wipe. So with the high chairs, the pack and plays, um, we uh, it's that basic kind of, of cleaning. We just you know disinfect and clean as much as possible. We actually do check out um, for the pack and play. We check out a sheets and a mattress pad, and I take those home and clean them and bring them back. And other than that, I mean, the cleaning, I think our biggest cleaning issue has been, it's sometimes it's table or chair legs that you can tell people had them down in the mud. Um, and then it, the carpet cleaner was, was the bigger one. But we actually, if, if you really wanted to um, be on top of things, we've got a a hose out back near our library thing so I guess we could if they bring back dirty tables and chairs we'd just say oh would you mind cleaning these off before we put them away okay great um, there's one more question I'll ask but in the meantime I'm gonna have um, the LEU pod brought over so people can download their certificate and just a reminder if you are watching an archive recording of the presentation um, information on how to obtain your LEU is in the video's description in YouTube. So the other question, Diane, was are there items in your library of things that you have temporarily quit lending due to the pandemic? No, no we haven't. In fact, we are getting, um, the, the pressure washer is getting more use than ever. I think people are home and you know are cleaning. I will add that um, we got that and I'm so glad we did we got a heavy duty pressure washer um, and then we bought the warranty with it and uh, the carpet cleaner same thing heavy duty one uh, and we have had to use that warranty one time um, like the oh, attachment cracked and it was replaced through the warranty. Okay. All right. At this time, I think we're going to stop the recording.